Okay, so uh, this entire week, uh, we're going to be talking about the thermodynamics of protein folding. And I just wanted to lay a, um, a little bit of a background so that uh, you can go through your study questions. Uh, and also this week's discussion worksheet uh, with like a little bit more of an understanding of what's going on. So when we talk about thermodynamics of protein folding, we are specifically referring to the spontaneity or how favorable a reaction is. We are not talking about the kinetics or how fast that the reaction is occurring. Okay, so we'll talk about how fast the reaction is occurring in week five of the quarter. But the idea here is that we're only talking about if this reaction is favorable or not. That's all we're talking about. Okay, um, so when we talk about the favorability of protein folding, uh, something that we have to talk about specifically is the Gibbs free energy or the delta G, okay? So we have to talk about the delta G or the Gibbs free energy, okay? So this is referring to your free energy, okay? So the, we, we can determine that the, the Gibbs free energy, so it's equal to the delta H minus T delta S, and just so that we can break down these ideas, the delta H refers to the enthalpy but another way of looking at it is the heat in a reaction. So we're gonna say that it's the enthalpy, okay, and this is the heat. Okay, and we'll explain what, how to calculate the delta H in a bit. And then we also are gonna be talking about T, which is temperature, and then the delta S, which is the entropy or the disorder or another term that we like to use in this class is the freedom of motion, which I'm going to abbreviate as FOM. So we're gonna talk about the enthalpy or the heat and the entropy and the entropy, which is referring to the freedom of motion in your reaction, okay? So the idea here is that if you can, if you know the enthalpy and the entropy, you can calculate the delta G. And then if the, the sign of delta G is less than zero, that means that your reaction is extragonic, which means that it is spontaneous, that means it happens naturally in your body. If the delta G is greater than zero, it means that your reaction is endergonic and it is non-spontaneous. And if some reaction, just to uh, put come connected to like what we're gonna be learning in future weeks, if some reaction has a delta G which is greater than zero, what you can do is actually couple it to another super favorable reaction such as ATP hydrolysis, and then that way you can make the reaction favorable. Okay, so I made this, table to kind of summarize the concepts that we're going to be going over. Um, so the delta G, again, we said that it's equal to the delta H minus T delta S. And then we're saying that a negative delta G is spontaneous, a positive delta G is non-spontaneous. So we're going to start circling the things that are favorable. So a negative delta G, it is favorable. Okay. So now we're going to also say that the delta H, we said that that is the enthalpy or the heat. But the way that we calculate it is it's H bonds broken minus H bonds formed. I know in your general chemistry classes, you learn it's products minus reactants. Um, the reason why we're learning it like this, it's a little bit easier to understand based on what I'm going to show you um, right after this. Okay, so hold on to that thought if you're like, why are we using this formula instead? But both formulas come to the same answer. It's just we're going to be using this one instead for this class. Okay, so delta H is H bonds broken minus H bonds formed. And we're gonna have a negative delta H means that you're forming more stable bonds. A positive delta H means that you're forming less stable bonds, okay? And the idea here is that you always, your goal is to always form more stable bonds in your products because you're gonna be releasing more energy, okay? So that means that we always wanna make our delta H more negative, okay? And then delta S is gonna be the S folded minus the S unfolded and we say that we have a negative delta S, and if that happens, we have a decrease in the freedom of motion, and a positive delta S means we have an increase in the freedom of motion or disorder, okay? And we always want to have a positive delta S, or it's favorable to have a positive delta S, because that means that the entropy is increasing, the disorder is increasing, and according to the second law of thermodynamics, we always want the entropy of the system or the universe to increase, and that is denoted over here by a positive sign. So in case you ever get confused and you're like, well, how do I know if I want the enthalpy to get negative or be positive? You can always go back to the formula. 
Okay, and we said that we always want a negative delta G because that means that our reaction is spontaneous. So in order to make the G more negative, you can make the H more negative, right? And then the S more positive because there's a minus sign before the T delta S, okay? So if you make the S more positive, which means we're increasing the disorder, that will give you a more negative delta G. And also if you make the delta H more negative, which means that we're forming even more stable bonds, you are going to be releasing more energies to make the delta G even more negative, okay? So I'm gonna stop the video here, but in the next video, I'm gonna show you guys how you can calculate the delta H and the delta S from um, using the formula that I showed over here.